I'm hitting record. Great. So now we're live. Welcome, everybody, to this remote interview. My name is Lisette, and I'm interviewing people and companies doing great things remotely. And today, on the line from Argentina, from Cordova, Argentina, Andrea Zabala. Welcome. Hi, Lisette. Thanks for having me. And uh, hi to everyone um, watching us. And listening on the podcast, both. Yes. Listening. And uh, so I have on your LinkedIn profile that you're an information systems engineer focused on international business development and offshore projects. So we're going to get into that for sure. Um, and that you've worked in Canada and Argentina. We'll definitely get into that for sure. But the first question, as I always ask, which is, what does your virtual office look like? What do you need to get your work done? Actually, I, my virtual office, I have a few virtual offices. Um, that's why I, I like to call it uh, not only work from home, but it's actually working from anywhere, right? Um, I just take my computer as, as, as I did today and my headsets because um, I'm, I'm not only listening, speaking a, a second language. So I really like to, to hear well and, and for the best, right? But I have like a circuit, if you will. So I have my, my office set up at my, at my place, at my house. Um, it's a very quiet neighborhood, kind of a uh, neighborhood in the suburbs. And um, I really like working there. Um, usually drop my kids at school and then uh, I'm by myself. So it's a very nice part of the day. And, and then I have other places. I, I move around probably kind of same area of the city in the south of Cordoba. Um, as of today, I'm visiting um, a partner's office. So I thought it was a great opportunity to have this interview uh, with you today. And some other times I'm just working out of a cafe, uh, a coffee shop uh, that I really like. It's close, close by. And um, they know me already. They have, uh, <laughs> they serve great breakfast, and it's it's uh, they have a, like a first floor, very quiet, and I can work there too. So I love that. I love that diversity of places. Okay, and tell us a little bit about what you do. What is an information systems engineer, um, and how did you go remote? I guess. Yeah. Today? Exactly. So that's, that's the degree of my university here in Cordoba. I studied at, at the Technological uh, University. Um, uh, and you do engineering with information. Probably um, they have changed that title now to software engineering. But, but it's uh, how you architect uh, systems to, to the best use of information to the to the service of, of human beings, right? Um, so I had my degree, um, and then I started to look into other areas to to improve or develop, right? So I, I had my post graduation in international marketing, and um, that's on the on the study side. And then I I started working um, as an intern, very young, while I was uh, studying. I, I well I was still at the university, so that gave me a lot of knowledge and learning, and it was great. Uh, it was great to go outside the books and and be hands on, and um, and I had the opportunity to work abroad. Um, three years in Canada, uh, mainly in the oil and gas industry. So with all, with all those uh, opportunities, I kind of turned my career from a software developer. I, I drove my career into more um, functional analysis and then a little bit of project management. And I ended up uh, probably the most, uh, the, for the past five, six years being, uh, or doing uh, product management. Um, and then I decided to go freelance after years of working um, for companies. It was a big decision. I bet. Um, yeah. And it's been a very challenging and, and, it's nice to learn because it's a new mode, working mode, a new world. And um, I've been meeting people and learning from others as well. 
and uh, as, a, as an independent consultant or, or a freelancer, I help companies um, to develop and to reach other markets. Uh, that's that's example of this partner that I mentioned that, that is uh, BCIT Global. I work with them to uh, put their services and products, software products into other markets. Um, the fact that I speak English and I also speak Portuguese uh, helped me a lot to bond and to create those those relationships and and cultivate uh, uh, and and potentially meet new customers for the company. Yeah. So that that's mainly what I've been doing for the past two years. And was it mostly the going remote when you went freelance or was there also working remotely in the, I mean, I am assuming if it was bigger companies like oil and gas, there was also some amount of working remotely. Oh no, yes, good question. Uh, actually, I've been working remotely since I was in Canada. So that was, that was 10 years ago. Um, I, I lived in Calgary and sometimes you had minus 28 oh my and goodness. streets were loaded with, with snow and not even the train would work. So uh, it was very common for, for us to work from home. Um, and then in big companies, uh, corporations, um, you usually have your headquarters somewhere else. Uh, like right. like in Argentina, like big companies, international companies, they have head headquarters mainly in the U.S. So you are remote. Even if you are in an office, you are remote. You, I I've used the phone so many hours in my life, uh, <laughs> 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 and uh, I love it. I, I think it's a, it's a great way to connect and 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 make. People feel that you are there. It doesn't matter if you are like 10 hours flight far. Uh, and then I think it's part of, uh, of our job. And, and especially being in Latin America, it's a, it's a reality that, that we have to, to embrace, right? Um, we tend to seek or, or to pursue different opportunities in, in different markets. And so for us, being remote is something that we have to learn, we have to improve every day. And especially if you want to win new customers, that they feel um, a little bit afraid because you're far, you are in a country that they don't know much about. Um, so there's a lot of room for, for improvement there. And has the um, what is the remote market like in Argentina? Are a lot of people are a lot of people doing it? Is it still relatively new? Is it is it being? Yeah. Embraced? I think it's it's still new, but um, I, I'm always into this this type of uh, topics. So I I talk to people. I I. I learn from people, other people doing it, right? And working remotely. Um, just to give you an example, uh, I live in a neighborhood uh, that we are 30, 30 families, right? 30 houses. And from those, there are seven, eight, eight people, uh, eight persons that work remotely in different, wow. different areas, right? And, and I found that interesting. So I asked them, I said, well, I'm going to be uh, interviewed about this and, and I wanted to have the number. So I found like there's a couple that they both work uh, from home. Um, and then that's, a, that's in a neighborhood. And then, as, as you said, there are some companies here uh, in Cordoba, like um, Hewlett Packard, um, we have Intel, we have Globant, we have um, Motorola that, that was acquired by Aris. <clears throat> and they actually have some uh, working models uh, of remote people as well. Um, so, and I think I've heard that in, in probably a previous interview. Um, there are some challenges, right? When, when, when there is an office, uh, a facility in your city, and you are the only one working remotely, it's, uh, it's, it's challenging. But I've known other models as well that everyone is remote. So there's no office. So yeah. they're all equally uh, 
That's definitely an easier model when everybody's yes. equally remote because you're all struggling yes. with the same thing. And that, yeah, I, I hear that a lot. It's true. I hear that a lot. Why are people going remote? Why are the people in your neighborhood going remote? I don't know if you asked them that, but I'm, I'm, that's a lot. That's a third almost of the people in the neighborhood. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I'll give you my opinion and then what, what I guess, right? I haven't asked them directly, but I think it's... Uh, you like your place. Uh, I mean, in my case, I, I don't know, I just open up my window, I have a, a large uh, patio, and then the trees and the, and the, and the birds. It, it sounds corny, but it's, it's amazing. Um, I think the context, it's, it's really good, it's very quiet. And then I think when you have a family and, and you have kids and and you want to do other things also. Uh, the fact that being trapped in an office for, for so many hours um, is it, not probably the choice for everyone. Um, in the same way, it's not the only choice or, or the best choice to be remote for, for some people as well. Right. Uh, but the fact that, uh, that I can change context, I like that. I don't know if I could like, work all the time from my home office. I really like what I, what I mentioned before, right? That I can kind of rotate and, uh, and go around. And, um, and I also work also from, from my cell phone, right? Like today, uh, uh, communications are, are great. Um, so I think you can work anywhere and, and the other thing aspect I wanted to mention I, I think there's a change back in the days where I was an intern or a, or a, or a young engineer um, everything was so formal right so okay from this time to this time it's work and then from from this from six and, and on it's life and I've learned throughout these years that everything is mixed um, because you end up bringing, bringing work to, to your place and probably finishing some things while you, you're fixing dinner. <laughs> right. And I don't think there's a point of, uh, of separating that uh, because sometimes it, it, you just uh, get out of the office, you're driving, and you're thinking about something amazing uh, and oh, that's what I wanted to do and just record a voice note or maybe I'm with my kids in the park and I'm thinking, oh, that's what we should do and just taking a quick note. So I don't think there should be just a separation of, of those worlds. So the fact that you can work remotely, it's like, uh, okay, yeah, I have time now and I want to do it now and here and why not, right? Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I hear a lot. And also, I know for me, I have the same. I love where I work and I love to be able to switch the context when I need to switch context because yes. it's when I'm running where I have all the ideas. I mean, I'm constantly stopping like, okay, note to self. When you get out, <laughs> you know, you need that space sometimes. Yes. So I feel really boxed in by offices. So I think you're right. And then with the technology, there seems to be no reason why we couldn't do it. But of course, I'm, a, I'm on the extreme advocacy side of things. So, <laughs> so I'm very- Yes, happy. yes. But um, we can't we're... take you seriously all exactly. the time. <laughs> exactly, I'm too extreme. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody has to fight for it. <laughs> exactly. But so let's you talk about- it. Yeah, so the, instead of just all the great things though, what's really hard? What are some of the things that you struggle with personally? Um, well, the fact that you can separate sometimes can be good and sometimes can be bad, right? Mm -hmm. um, just a few uh, tips, if you want, that I can share. Like, um, uh, I think there was a time that I worked from home a lot. And, um, uh, and so you get up and, and take a shower or uh, fix breakfast and then you jump into your computer. Uh, so my tip is dress. Dress like you were going out of the house. Not dress up, but dress at least, right? Uh, so it, it makes you feel that you are 
to start something that is different from from your domestic life right and have a have a, a separate office so we have an extra bedroom that was set up as an office so that's good because you enter there and, and you're like okay yeah this is this is an office right um, and then <clears throat> I think uh, when <clears throat> sorry when you work remotely uh, or from from your home you have to do the things that that you are always wishing you could do while you are at the office right go for a walk if you want go for a run go outside um, maybe have breakfast in your patio and then start your day right so I, I noticed that I was so into my computer and then it was like I was exhausted because I didn't change air or didn't go outside because you, you, you don't realize an, an hours pass by, right? Because you're at home, you don't have to drive and everything is cool. So it's like endless. Right. You're super comfortable. You've got everything you want and need. And yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I love this advice of taking advantage of the perks of remote working. Exactly. Yeah, because we then, forget. You're right. We forget. We forget. Um, then I used to take breaks because at the office you take breaks because you are with people, right? And say, let's go for to the cafeteria and talk about the meeting or talk about the presentation. So when you're at home, uh, you keep skipping those breaks sometimes, right? So here in Argentina, it's our coffee is the mate. So I would go to the kitchen, just prepare my mate and have it by the computer and probably I didn't even stand up just for a few <laughs> right. minutes, right? Uh, so you you have to emulate the office uh, in some way that makes you feel like uh, better. So if I if I'm in the office and I at the middle of the mor in the morning I go to the cafeteria and have a coffee with a colleague, I used to do the same, but probably call. Right. So let's say we we just finish a, a conference call, like an hour, half an hour, an hour and a half conference call, long uh, phone call. And uh, at the office, you would go, let's go for a coffee and talk about how how it went or what's our next steps. So I would call. Right. That person kind of informally and probably have my mate at the patio. Right? right, so you you don't miss that because you still talk to people and and you humanize it a little bit, right? So, do you have a minute? Okay, let me let me prepare my mate and I'll, I'll call you so we talk about how it went uh, or what what should we do next. Those are some some tips um, that I actually wrote down uh, about that. And um, also when you work in a mixed mode, right? Like you work from home or virtually, and then some other days you go to the office. Some, something I noticed or learn actually, is that when you come into the office, just maximize the face-to-face -face time. Because um, I notice people that they are so much into the computer that they are not even talking to others, even, even the, at the office, right? So while I was working in that mixed model, when I, the days I was in the office, I tried to arrange my agenda to set all the face-to-face -face or workshops or innovation workshops, design, brainstorming sessions, even war rooms, so you interact with people and do all the visual part, right? Like, like a whiteboard and stickies and drawings. So I felt that okay, I'm really maximizing the time that I'm spending at the office with my colleagues, right? And, um, and when you're virtual, you don't want to lose that, right? I'm, I, I like doing scratching and sketching and, and writing, like I, sh I show you kind of this or stickies or, or taking notes. So if I'm at home, I go do the same, right? Like in the office, I'm probably, I was thinking about something did some sketch and and then take a picture and send it to my colleague and say okay look what i did or just put put on the camera right and and still not lose that human interaction 
Right. I really like the idea. It sounds like you're saying you should maximize your time at the office when you have access to your colleagues, but then also maximize the time when you're at home and you have all the great perks of being able to sit in your backyard and go for coffee. And yeah, super important. Super important. I have to say, I hear from a lot of people that they are always on and I myself am absolutely guilty of just waking up, turning on the computer and just getting going right away. Like you just dive in and all of a sudden it's noon and I haven't even like gotten out of my pajamas outside yet. Like when you go to the office, at least you have the commuting time just to put your your brain to wake up at least, right? But if you're at home, you jump into your computer and then it's like the evening and so maximize that possibility too, yeah. So in terms of then working with clients, or I, do you have other tips before I move on to something a little <laughs> different? I think I went through all of them, but I, I, might, I might think about some other one. Yeah, those are good but- tips, though, I mean, for sure. <laughs> <It's> really, <laughs> I'm like, oh, these are good reminders for me. No, but um, in terms of working with other people and with, with, with clients and managing the work, how do you gain the trust of those people that you're working with? That's a great question. Um, you know, there's a very first uh, phase in the in the relationship, right? I help companies to search uh, for potential clients that at, at the very beginning, they are leads. And probably your first contact is an email, uh, kind of out of the blue email or a phone call. So... The, the very first contact is how, how you talk to them, how you show, how you sell what you have to offer, right? Um, so how, how you can be transparent. Um, I've learned from also from them, right, that they are a little bit reluctant because they feel like, oh, you're far away. You, you're going to hide things from me. I won't have control. So I've learned... Um, through through working in this in this work model that that you have to put all the cards on the table okay so this is who we are this is where we are located and then show right um, and that's another tip I forgot and and it's related with this um, and it's it's related to humanize it and and you and, and Pilar used a lot uh, about uh, that word, um, I think in one of the interviews, that, um, and I used to separate a lot, like if, if you are working from home and, and your dog is barking, I mean, it's okay. I mean, you don't have to just go and kill the dog because it's, it's <laughs> barking. I mean, it's okay because I've learned that from other people too. Like, okay, let, let me just, I don't know, close the window. Give me just a second. And, and it's okay to say, yeah, I'm, I'm at home or I don't know, my kid is sick today. So I will, work, working, uh, I will be working here. So sorry if you hear some noise. It's, it's the same situation when you're trying to win um, a new customer and you are remote. This is who we are. This is what we offer. Um, this, these are our challenges. And this is how we will be working and partnering with you, right? Transparency. You will have access to uh, the information. Uh, I usually invite them to come. Um, not all the time is possible, but they, they love it. They love to come to Argentina because they they think it's an exotic place and it's far away and the culture, it's uh, it's amazing. And they learn how to drink mate and and they they learn that we drink that, we don't smoke that. So (laughs) that's a difference. difference. um, But if it is not possible, I try to show all that, right? So this is our office And, and don't be afraid of the camera. Like, like we are doing, right? Yeah. Because it's totally different. Uh, you're seeing my gestures. You're kind of seeing my mood. And uh, we do that. We open up the camera. We present people. Okay, this is our project manager. This is the development team. Uh, we have people to talk to, to the potential customers. And uh, we pilot. So we build that trust. Okay, we'll do a pilot. So it's a both way, right? both way relationship uh, the customer needs to know the company and also the company needs to know the customer because there are different ways of working so that the teams need to to assemble and um, 
it's a it's a first tone in that relationship and then once they feel they can trust you then they start growing with you and and there's a there's a partnership born yeah you know i had this um i had the situation actually just this morning where a new client that i'm giving a workshop to uh, I was emailing and she said an email back and she says, and oh, by the way, I am I'm at home today because I may have rubella, which is a new thing. It's like one of the five breakouts of rubella in Finland, you know, and you're like, whoa, interesting. But immediately I felt bonded somehow yes. because I yeah. felt like well, that's an interesting like interesting information that we can share. Like if there's, I don't know what it was, but it, you're, it's the same. Like it's this immediate, like, oh, you've shared something personal. I feel a bond. Personal, I, common, domestic, part of yeah. your life. Yeah. 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 It's weird. And she's a brand new client and it's like, oh. Yeah. So, I mean, I can imagine it doesn't work with everybody and different people need yes. different information. But I think as a sensitive, savvy individual, people can feel out what's, what's what's a good thing to share and what's not yeah and and also show a little bit about your culture because it's a cross-cultural relationship as well right um so i remember any i was working in, uh, in one of the big corporations and um there was um the soccer world cup going on and i have to tell you it was just crazy like it was hard to take a phone call and, and I was uh, in a conference call with one of the top managers uh, in the U.S. And Argentina almost scored. And it was like, oh, right. Wow, all this noise. And I, I had to stop and say, well, guys, yeah, you know, soccer. We're crazy about soccer. So that you will hear something because it was all over the, the yeah, office. Nothing you can do. I mean, I couldn't hide anywhere. So, uh, and they were like, Oh, that's fine. Like they thought it was fun. And it was, a, it wasn't like every, an, an everyday situation. It was an exception. So every four years, probably that's fine. right. <laughs> right. But let me ask you, act, let me actually ask you about culture because it comes up a lot, but I can't seem to get, I mean, it's a hard thing to nail down. It's such a big topic and people deal with it in so many different ways. But how do you, I mean, when you have a different, different cultures on the team, how do you start about dealing with it? Hmm. Uh, especially if they are all remote, right? Yeah, or, you know, even on a co-located team, I would think that the techniques would be the same, whether you're in an office or whether you're remote, I think. That's my theory. Yes, yes, exactly. So there's always a, a learning curve, right, for everything. And I think you get to know um, about the people you work with. Um, I have examples that I can recall that I, I've worked with that person for I don't know, almost two years, and I didn't know she was working from home all the time in the U.S., right? Uh, and I got that information probably, I don't know, after, after a conversation, a presentation, a debrief, or I don't know why, because I asked or I found out. And so then, you know, okay, she's here, she's co-located, right? And um, uh, but then she also works from home and I have another team. I think it's very important to have a map of, of your people, right? That you're working with. Um, and, and that comes to a, an area that, that I like a lot uh, and it's called, uh, well, the stakeholders management. And probably they are not just stakeholders, it's just people. Mapping people, where they are, um, how they work, um, and how you can get the best out of that. Um, one thing that gives you and gives, uh, gives companies all over the world uh, the fact that, that you can work remote, it's, a, it's an probably unlimited pool of resources. Why limit your company just to have resources in, in your area where you can reach out so many talented people? But then, as you mentioned, it comes the challenge of, um, the cross-cultural thing, right? Uh, I personally love, love learning about other cultures. And I think that's, that's something that helps you a lot. Um, uh, what time do you work? Or um, it's okay if I ping you after work uh, because I have something to ask. Or 
um, just share and probably taking the first step. Um, that helps a lot. Um, I like the idea of taking the first step for asking yes. the questions. I think that's yes. a really proactive, being and proactive. You're also by example there. Yes. And another thing that worked, and, and it's kind of informal, I'm not saying that's a golden rule for, for all the cases, but I've received uh, many, many people visiting uh, on business, Cordova companies, um, searching for partners. And uh, we take them to a house, we do a barbecue, and we, ha we open up the doors of our houses. And I, I've heard so many times, thank you for doing that, thank you for doing that. That's not common everywhere. And, and it's, a, it's a way of, uh, in a relaxed environment, uh, to get to know each other, to, for the teams to get to know each other, and then they learn how you live, they, they learn about some social norms, if you want, and I think it's a, also a great way to complement uh, building that, that relationship. But I don't think it's common everywhere, probably, but I think it's a, it's a big key uh, part of humanizing the, the relationship. I can imagine. I really love that idea. In fact, when I was in Vietnam, um, one of the people took me out to the lo his favorite local cafe where they just nice. have this one dish and that's all they have. There's just one local dish. And then you learn how to make these spring roll wraps. And, you know, that's just how. And I just thought that was my favorite meal of the whole conference, even though they'd taken us to five star restaurants and things. And I yes. thought, I mean, I'm not a fancy schmancy person anyway, so it's, it's, I always feel a little uncomfortable in those places, but the, the local experience was so cool. Yeah, yeah. And um, I, I keep sometimes imagining, okay, um, we, I've been in conference calls where someone is driving to the office, which I think is a little bit crazy here in Argentina because of the way we drive, but I think it's okay in some other countries where the traffic is more organized anyways. Uh, but uh, I ask, so, okay, so how long do you take to the office? And I, and, and I start learning about the place, right? Okay, because I'm in California and I live here in, outside of the city and I drive, but sometimes I just stay at home. And I don't know, it's just asking. And if you feel that the other person is uncomfortable, you stop asking. <laughs> Probably that's a <laughs> good, good advice. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but people, is, it's responsive. I mean, um, I, I remember having a whole team from China. We were doing a, a transition of the project and uh, they were here in Cordoba like for a week and a half. And we did this big barbecue and they were amazed about the place and the houses and they were asking about construction and and okay and you guys do this and that yeah what what do you do on on saturday uh well we we just stay home or we go to the hills or we take kids to the park and it's just normal life right and domestic life i don't know i think that that brings people together and it gives such insight into why people do the things that they do it's always just yeah. Oh, I didn't know that it was common to, I don't know, insert whatever. It, yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Like share mate at the office. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like that's not something that happens in the Netherlands at all. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, mm -hmm. things like that would be really fun to know yeah. when you know something. So I'm getting, we're getting to the end of our time, but I, there's so many questions. I still want to, <laughs> we haven't oh, talked sorry. about activity and personality or no, it's okay. We might have to do a, a round two at some point to sort of dive deeper into these things. But do you have advice for people who are just starting out? More tips for? In for their people? careers, you mean young people? Yeah. Yeah. Like, for instance, I had a freelancer come up to me in Vietnam and he says, okay, I love this style. Like, what would you recommend? That's a good question. Um, when I was brand new at the, at the uh, work market. Um, I couldn't think about working remote. I, I, I was starting to, th to think about that, uh, to think about other ways of working, but we didn't have the tools. Like no one was prepared for that. Um, so I was in an office and I, I don't think it was bad. Um, I think, um, uh, 
I learned a lot and, and you're young and, and probably you stay long hours at the office and it's okay and you go for a beer after the office. And like everything, it's around probably <coughs> the office <coughs> or most. Um, so if you're a young professional and you're going to enter the freelance uh, world, just try to emulate that. Connect with people. Like, like very similar to what you're doing. I, I, like I go through your page and I see uh, many interviews of people from different parts of, of the world that are doing the same, probably struggling with the same, facing same challenges, doing the same learnings. So reach out and, uh, and talk to people that has probably have been doing this for, for a long time or, or ask for advice. And maximize any opportunity of, uh, of um, networking. Uh, I mean, if you're not going to have an office at all, that, that's what I would say to, to a person that is starting like full freelancing mode, right? Like remote. Okay, uh, connect, right? Go out, reach out. Uh, even if it is not your colleague, read about new ways, learn new ways of working, new tools uh, that, that would bring benefit to, to the way you work. Yeah, I love that. It's all, also, it's uh, don't reinvent the wheel, right? Lots of people have done this before you. So that, I think that's even more important to reach out and network and learn because you don't have to do everything from the beginning. Yeah, and yeah. there's there's a big change. I feel that there there are um, many venues of of um, of people, companies, and teams uh, kind of exploring these new uh, ways of working. Um, in in a week, I'm going to be giving a, a talk, a palestra. Uh, in Portuguese to to a big bank in Brazil and they have like this project management day and they have speakers uh, that would be there face to face in a room in a big room with 100 people and I will be the only one doing it remotely so I'm very excited about that and and I, I love the fact that they have opened up to to that possibility and they bring someone from outside their country to speak so yeah. I love that. I, I, and I think people is kind of uh, uh, exploring new ways. So yeah, the thank opportunity. you for <laughs> My pleasure. It's <laughs> my pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I think it's true. I mean, the, the reach is now so much wider. And think of the things we could do if we just get the right people in touch with each other. And yes. I mean, if, I think that the people that don't see that potential are really ho holding themselves back. And I'm sure there's lots of value to working together in the office, but oh, I just can't help but be excited about like, what can we do if, just, if we reach just a little further? You know, we don't have to do yes. crazy things. So, yeah. And one, one little thing, uh, and it's not that little, I think social networks have helped a lot for yeah. virtual, building those virtual relationships. Uh, like I have, I've worked with people in a very formal uh, environment, but I could send a Facebook invite request and they would accept right away. And then you get a little window to that person, uh, person's life. And, and probably that's one way to humanize it, right? Or to complement that uh, if you're 100% virtual, right? So yeah. Twitter, Facebook, any, any kind of social network um you get to know the person yeah and even on linkedin even when it's just purely yeah. professional you still get a taste of things that you yes remember. yeah i exactly. agree yeah, i love the social networking aspect of it i think it's so fun it's so yeah and i like seeing the slices of different life I, i'd say that that's one big one of the biggest um benefits for me was just seeing the world a little bit and realizing like oh my gosh it's so different in different places and nobody's wrong we're all just different just seeing yeah, yeah. You know, it's so intense i mean you can hear it but it's something different when you see it and experience it yes so, yeah like i know you love hiking I, we never met <laughs> that's true <laughs> <laughs> from facebook and twitter and yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it's true <laughs> it's funny and i know you have children which we didn't yeah see. never met yeah that's my sport that's my hobby 
play with kids, run after my kids. They're five and three. So oh, man. actually I had to fill some personal data for my, my, uh, my conference uh, in Brazil. And they asked me, okay, what's your hobby? And I said, well, I used to play volleyball. I play once in a while, but my hobby and my sport now is to like jump in the elastic bed with my kids. Uh, <laughs> and it's like, it's like working out. I'm like exhausted after that. So yeah, uh, they have fun. a lot of energy, don't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Endless. Especially three and five. I mean, yes. That's <laughs> yes. You have to keep up with that. Yeah. So final question. Um, which is, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you if they want to know more and learn more or just talk more? What's your preferred method? Okay, here. Awesome. That's that Twitter. Is, on podcast, you're, what you're not seeing is, uh, it's, if you want to hold it up again, A-N-D Zabala, at A-N-D Zabala for Twitter. Yeah. That's Twitter. And then my Gmail account. Great. Andrea. Yeah. At gmail.com. Great. Awesome. I love that you have the visual component. For all those <laughs> you listening on the podcast, you have to go back and at least watch the last five minutes of the video to see this. It's great. Because it also shows there's so many possibilities with video in terms of yes. showing other things and sharing information. So I love that you did that. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks so much, Andrea. I really appreciate talking with you. There's some great tips there. As you can see, my notebook is full, absolutely <laughs> full of great information. So thank you. Cool. Do we do this? Yeah. Until next time. Yeah. Fist bump. Be powerful. <laughs> <laughs>